I also just want to show you, I, I think I've given you some background on our plant. So being focused on the export market, it's really, it's a very challenging environment. And the, I, I need to echo what Lisa was saying in terms of the systematic and systemic type of approach. A lot of the opportunities are within the system across uh, boundaries, um, not where we used to focus. Because again, it's not as if we've never focused on it, but we've had a silo attitude focused on a few plants, a few people were focusing on it, and uh, we missed a lot of opportunities. So uh, I was thinking of taking you exactly through what we've um, achieved, also a little bit of the picture before and after. So in terms of our, the biggest areas we've made some savings is on the LPG and on electricity. And on the LPG, you can see we, st we had a 49% reduction in our LPG consumption. Um, over this period, the production rate stayed sort of the same. So the only driver was the amount of, of um, usage. And what we did there was really interrogate assumptions previously made in terms of how the process should work, what are the constraints, what are the boundaries of the uh, standards and uh, set points. In terms of the electricity, uh, you'll see there's a little bit of a slight um, upside. We sit with a Midrix plant, we, which is the largest consumer in, in LPG, and the plant is deteriorating and it, was, um, it is requiring a significant maintenance intervention. So until our reline in 20, this stage 2017, um, we, we will manage it as close to this level as possible, but there are some uh, equipment issues which cannot be resolved until serious investment. Uh, in terms of the electricity, 12% savings on the 160 megawatt baseline. What you'll see is we had a, uh, this is our year on year, maybe some more detail here. Um, this is what we saved. So year to date, we have a phenomenal figure there and there's some good news and bad news. Um, what I've found in the energy environment is you meet these challenges, you overcome them, and then these new challenges. The world changes. And if you are not able to adapt, well, then you won't survive. So this is us adapting in a low production scenario. And I'll show you some more detail on that. The commodity market has crashed, steel prices has plummeted, and there's not really a market for the steel if you can produce it at the low cost. So we had to do something different. So that is not sustainable at a full um, uh, production uh, plant, but w at the 70% capacity that we currently, we, we are, we've reduced, we've variabilized some of our base load, which we assumed was fixed. Um, in terms of the numbers, which somebody um, asked about previously. So on the electricity, that is just for 2014, 115 million. On the LPG, 165 million. And if you look at the cumulative effect over the four years, it was about 900 million rand. It sounds as if we're making a lot of money. We're not. <laughs> this is just helping us survive. <laughs> okay, I wanted to show you this. So this is our baseline regression. And this is, as you can see, specific consumption. So as we are producing less, we should be consuming more. And this is what we've managed now lately. So we've really reduced uh, the energy consumption at low production volumes. And we've done, done that again by interrogating the way we were previously doing things. Um, we reduced our matrix, which is a high energy user significantly. As, as low as possible. It's just consuming the excess gas from the Querex plant. And by doing that, we have shifted the ratio between chemical energy and electrical energy required in the downstream processes. And that is how we manage that, as well as um, shutting down, um, you know, when you're not physically casting, everything is shut down on the plant. So we managed have a system of two sequences previously where it was 24 7 the people are still there but the scheduling of the sequences are now you you um, run the plant a certain way and in the waiting period you just switch off whatever you can okay so that was basically <laughs> the presentation 
What I can share with you is what, we, what type of projects did we do. And there's a little bit of the history. This is an old slide, but just showing the progression. And this was year-on-year -year savings. So on top of the projects that we did in 2011 was 92 million. Then we did new projects in 2012. So we sustained that and added that on top of the, uh, further 127. And at that stage, um, 28. So you could see the new savings. We managed to sustain what we what we have achieved, but the new savings did become a little bit less because the low hanging fruit was not there anymore. And now you run into a scenario where you actually require capital investment. Um, we looked at technology, and I think my previous comment earlier about um, only doing 20% on that initial energy audit. I think about five years back, the bulk of the proposals you'll receive would fall under the technology component. So there, there would be a few switch off and um, don't waste uh, type of ideas, and the rest would be technology uh, related. And we did invest in some of this. So we did do some VSD projects. This was the projects done, I think, in 2013. Um, so we've done over the years a few VSDs, and we always get very good results from them. And we've done waste heat utilization as well. And that is, this is our capital investment, and it amounted to probably uh, between 20, between 15 and 20 million rand in total. But here is where we had um, a lot of opportunity, um, not wastage uh, on the air, uh, oxygen, compressed air, things like that, best practices. We are lucky, we are affiliated, we're part of a big international group. Um, I think the Europeans have been focused on energy efficiency for a long time. So within the steel industry, they've developed what they call best practices for steel plants, which helps. It's not always 100% applicable, but at least it gives you some ideas. And then also with the projects we've done with um, UNIDO on, and NCPC on our various systems. But the biggest savings came from this component, efficiency innovation which means you really go and look at your process and say, what did I really, why am I doing this? What do I need to accomplish? Isn't there another way of doing it? Um, increasing oxygen purity, for instance, you get more for the same electrical um, requirement. Um, and now we've added the low volume opportunity as well. Okay, and then on the tariff structure, I must say at low volume production, there's also some more opportunity with, um, let's say, managing your, your electricity cost if you on the Megaflex tariff, time of use tariff. So that also uh, helps and it has helped us managing our cost currently in this difficult period again. Um, and then reporting, Lisa also mentioned it. If you're not measuring, if somebody not see it, um, Arden as well, if you don't hold people accountable where, you know, there's an anomaly reported, you're not within your parameters, then people will start forgetting the next um, burning issue will attract the attention. So the reporting side is important and there needs to be champions and there needs to be designated resources. If you don't have the designated resource, um, yeah, I don't think you will necessarily be... Um, uh, Okay, there was one, one further slide. What I wanted to just show you as well, and that was our total um, consumption, is sometimes your environment change. I mentioned the environment changing. We also had in 2014 a situation where our raw material, um, yeah, where our raw material uh, quality decreased. And the impact on our total energy consumption, much of it experienced from coal and coke, rather than the electricity, but definitely on the electricity as well. So you have less FE, and on top of that, you have more silica, silica requiring more fluxes, fluxes required, requiring energy to melt. Um, your yields are lower, so the, the knock-on effect and the cost of that small deterioration in uh, raw material quality. So measuring your incoming quality is also important, and that at least you, you can understand it. It would have been much worse if we weren't managing it. So we managed from a cost perspective to counter a lot of the negative knock-on from that quality deviation, but it also had a serious impact uh, on our uh, performance, energy performance. So you can never stop and relax and say, I've arrived. There's always some new challenge or some new opportunity which you can unlock. 